Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I know it's been a little bit since I posted, but um, there's been a lot going on. Um, I just started a new job actually doing the same kind of work um, with artistry and sales, but with a new company. So that's been kind of a little consuming and stuff. And just, you know, getting back into the swing of things with my kids and school. So, um, I do apologize for not getting in and getting a video done, um, but let's hop into it. I want to start off um, just kind of a, a get ready with me chit chatty vidi, vidi, <laughs> chit chatty video, um, and also show you guys just a few new products and stuff. Um, one that I picked up recently that I've been working with and I've never used before is the Giorgio Armani Beauty Luminous Silk Foundation, and um, it's interesting. I don't know if it's a favorite yet. I think the color's a little bit off for me just because I'm coming down from the summer tan and getting back into my pale as paperness. So I'm trying to find formulas and, and colors and tones that I like for myself right now. I'm like in between and I don't know about you guys, but I hate that. So I want to start priming today. I haven't used this in a little bit, but this is the No Problem Primer from Touch and Soul. And I love this. Um, if you have pore concerns and you need a little bit of like light moisture, it goes on super smooth, super silky, and it just feels really good. So um, anyway, really quickly before we continue chit chatting. I just want to tell you guys, I picked up a sample of the Tinny Dole Ultra Wear um, in 380 warm, which I know is like pretty intense and dark. But the problem is, some of the neutral tones, and with Tinny Dole, it is a really difficult line, I think, to get to know and to match yourself to because the shade range is so off the chart and out there. But um, I'm using Luminous Silk in number five, which is a little bit more neutral and light for me. And sometimes when it's too neutral, it turns kind of bluish and that's how you know you need more warmth. Um, so I picked up a little tinny dole just to kind of mix in because most of what I have is neutral um, as far as foundations go. But this one has just enough warmth and almost like golden and peach in it, which even though I'm fair, I do have golden in my skin. And I wanna mix that with my Armani foundation to kind of get the perfect blend here. Cause I do, I need that warmth. I need that undertone, but I also need a little bit of neutral because I'm not super yellow and super golden. There's just kind of a fair wash of it in my skin. So when you guys shop for foundations, if you don't know kind of where you're at and what you're doing, always kind of really pay attention to the veins in your skin, the undertones when you flush, you know, things like that, um, and match to your neck and your shoulders because I think so many of us tend to just want to match to our face, which is fine. But if you have a lot of sun damage, discoloration, hyperpigmentation, and then your body is a different color, you want to be careful with how you match to your face. Because if you're just matching to that, you can pick colors that look great on your face, but do nothing for blending with the rest of your body. And I've noticed that because stuff will look really good under like certain lighting and then I'll get out into natural lighting and I'm just like damn girl you are blue your skin looks pinky blue and that's when I know I've gone too neutral or too cool and undertones are tricky but I'm sure you know the rule of thumb if you have blue veins you tend to be a more cool tone if you have green veins, you tend to be more warm and golden. And then if you have a mixture of blue and green when you look at your veins, then you're probably more neutral. But So I'm just mixing a tiny little bit more of both formulas. And I'm just gonna blend out now with a beauty blender. I like to go in with a brush just to initially apply. And then just do some touches here and there with the Beauty Blender. 
So one product that I've had for a long time, not super long, but I've had for a while, that I kind of walked away from for a little bit and now I want to kind of get back into is the Laura Mercier um, Secret Camouflage Base. And this is an SC2. And really what you can do is work with the two different colors, one more peachy, one more yellow, to create the ultimate amount of you know coverage based on your skin tone and using like you know a little bit more of one versus the other to really kind of determine the best ultimate color for your skin. Um, I, I like using a little more of the peach just because I feel like it helps with the darkness. And granted, now probably looking at my skin, I'm probably more of an SC1. But um, yeah, we'll make it work. This is really great though. When you follow the Laura Mercier way, it's actually designed to really be more of a face corrector or if you have a particular blemish of some sort, um, if you have you know discoloration, they prefer that you use it that way. I'm gonna try to use it for concealer today just because I've had some pretty intense darkness under my eyes. I feel like I need a little boost here. And I love this for like ultimate coverage. So the thing is with this, it's very, very thick and you definitely want to warm it up before you go in and apply it. Um, so definitely work your finger into the product, work it into the back of your hand and really get in there and press with it and emulsify it so that it warms up and almost kind of liquefies because if you don't, it's gonna be very hard to move this product around and you're gonna find yourself having a lot of difficulty trying to get it onto your skin. Another thing you can do is grab something that's a little bit more fluffy but still dense, work it into the back of the hand and then kind of circle it into the areas that you need it. Okay. And another product that I picked up recently, and I'm actually gonna dab a little bit of that in here just to work into the center of my face, is um, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. This is actually a full coverage concealer, and this is shade number two. It's very creamy, very thick, but it feels kind of similar to a Tarte um, creaseless concealer versus like a Shape Tape. It's definitely a more hydrating finish and um, definitely full coverage. So now I'm just going in and blending everything with my Beauty Blender to make sure everything looks seamless. Get me out, all the doubts I had are gone away. When you're touching me, I'm not afraid. No, this ain't going away. And then to set today underneath my eyes, I'm actually gonna use the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder um, underneath my eyes only. And I'm gonna apply it with a sponge. Let's use my Morphe sponge. Now usually the Laura Mercier way is to apply it with a brush and actually like pat it into the skin, but I'm gonna use it to kind of set and bake a little bit just because I am putting some shadows on. And I want this to be bright, but I also wanna have something to protect me in case any of my shadows fall out. So I'm gonna use it like a baking powder, but really it's more just to set concealer. <clears throat> and now I wanna move on to my eyeshadows. And for that, I'm excited because I picked up recently the Urban Decay Born to Run foundation palette. It's been out for a hot minute. I'm always late to the game. You guys know this already if you watch my channel, but I take pride in not being sponsored. I'm not an affiliate. I don't receive PR. This is just solely my earnings, stuff that I buy and that I try out and genuinely want to tell you, hey, I love it or hey, I hate it. So um, I've been working with it though. This is not the first time I've played with it and I actually really, really love this palette. The colors um, alone are just gorgeous. I love the mixtures of mattes and shimmers 
in um, sparkle and it's just really great tones for my you know my skin type my skin tone um, and one look I created recently that I didn't film but I actually got some pretty good feedback on was kind of like a mauvey smoky eye so I think I'm gonna do something similar to that today and um, to start this look off I actually want to go into the color breakaway which is just a really pretty kind of almost pink white and um, it's a matte tone, but I think it has a little bit, I don't know, like a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not super frosty or sparkly. And I really love this color just to overall set and highlight. So I kind of put this starting off on the brow bone, but then I'm gonna take it all over the eyelid just to really prime and make sure that this is the first step to getting my eyes the way I want them. The next color I'm going to use is really more of just a soft beige, which is Weekender. And it's just another great way to kind of work into the crease and just get a nice base for our transition. And you can wash a little bit of this onto the lid as well. All right, so now I wanna actually go into this really pretty color Baja, and I'm gonna start that off using a Morphe 441. And Baja is a really, you know, pretty typical now burnt orange. You're seeing it in so many palettes. Um, really just a warm burnt orange brown, but I want to take this directly into the crease, even slightly onto the lid, and then we're going to start buffing and working our way upwards to warm up this crease. And I'm starting with this because I am going to end up blending in the dark mauve colors on my lid, but this is just that little bit of warmth, I think, that'll kind of offset the purple mauve tones. Now to soften that crease just a little bit and to blend, I'm going to use this really pretty peachy color called Still Shot. And this is probably one of my favorite colors in the palette just because it's this gorgeous kind of salmon peachy pink. And I'm going to pop this right on top of where we placed Baja. And we're just going to kind of circle this ever so much into the crease just to kind of softly blend it out so that it's not looking too sharp and too intense. Everything's got to come together with this look. Now I actually want to go down into a more tight tapered brush. And this is from BH Cosmetics, but it's still a crease brush. It's just very dense, very tightly packed. And this is why I wanna use this because we're gonna start working into that mauve tone and I want that to be really sharp in the crease. So going into this really awesome color, Hellride, which is kind of like that magenta, cranberry, mauve, like it's just a mixture of different colors, but it's a matte tone. We're gonna work that into this brush and I'm actually gonna warm it up on the back of my hand. And starting in the crease, really tightly into the crease and onto the lid even you can go with this because this is going to be the lid color but I want to start it up in the crease this way it blends into the oranges and the corals And then we're gonna start circling it up into the crease. You can circle it onto the lid. Okay. Now from that same brush collection, I'm picking up a BH Pink Marble number eight, and we're gonna work that into Hell Ride. And this is a nice flat kind of dense shadow brush, and we're gonna start packing this onto the lid. Starting from up at the crease and working our way down towards the lash line.
to intensify this color, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this dark chocolate brown. This is punk. And I'm actually gonna take that first, put that on the back of my hand, and then grab Hell Ride and mix the two together. And that's the color I want to be closest to my lash line because that, that's gonna be like super dark compared to the rest of the look. And that's gonna create a lot of that smokiness. Okay, so going back into a lighter fluffy brush, the MB23 from Morphe, I'm gonna go back into that really pretty peachy color still shot. And I just wanna again, take it and circle it on the outside edges to make sure everything is nice and blended down. I don't want it to be super duper messy. Um, granted, I consider this more of like a grungy fall smoky look but I still want everything to be nice and clean. Really quickly, I'm just going to add a little bit more Secret Brightening. And I wanna add it to just the outside corners to really kind of sharpen the edge of my eyeshadow. I wanna keep the edge nice and sharp, but I actually wanna come in a little bit under the lower lash line and just kind of dust away from the lower lash line because we're gonna start lining that with some shadow. And I don't want that to get affected by this powder. Now I wanna grab a pencil brush, any type of like smudge brush, pencil, this is a Sigma E30, and we're gonna go back into our Urban Decay palette and mixing Punk and Hell Ride again, um, or using whatever's on the back of your hand. I have quite a bit on my hand whenever I do shadows. And we're gonna start on the outside corner, right up to the lash line here, and just kind of bring this from the outside going inward. And then I'm also gonna fan it up towards the crease. Now grabbing a little bit of Hell Ride and Baja, actually I'm gonna mix them together. And starting from the outside corner, I'm gonna work my way in just to warm up a little bit underneath. Now from the same pink marble collection from BH, I want to grab this number seven and I'm going to grab Still Shot, that really pretty peach color. And again, we're going to take this underneath the lower lash line, but I'm going to be a little bit more like free handed about it and not so, you know, sharp and defined and precise because I want to just buff out the lower lash line and make this really nice and blended and smoky. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I contoured and bronzed and I used my Morphe 9C contour palette, which I don't think is made anymore. Sorry guys, um, but I do love that palette a lot. And I mixed in a little bit of Makeup Revolution's Pro HD Contour. So that's actually a really, really good palette as well. And then of course my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Your girl keeps it chill and cheap and on the real and that's how I like it. <laughs> and it works for me. Um, really quickly, I did pick up Lily Lashes. These are the um, Mink, my, Mykonos, Mykonos. Um, I've never used Lily Lashes before, but I've seen so many people on Instagram rave about it and just social media in general. And these lashes really did look beautiful to me. Um, and I'm nervous. I don't want to like screw them up. I don't want to ruin them, but I do want to try them for the look today. Before we go into lashes though, I actually want to go ahead and add a little bit more color on my lid. And to do that, I'm actually going to take Guilt Trip which is a frosted dark purple, and mix that with um, Wild Heart, which is very similar to Hell Ride, but a little bit more magenta, a little more foil in there. And I wanna mix these two purples together to add a little bit of like a glisten onto the um, center of the lid here. So I'm gonna kind of work this in and pat it into the center. And just amplify this look a little bit. Still keeping it soft, smoky, kind of gritty, I guess. Maybe soft isn't the word. Soft grit, does that make sense? Because um, it's not like super, you know, dark, dark. But just giving myself a little bit of a oomph here. 
Okay, so this is actually a really cheap eyeliner, but it is from Torrid, okay, you guys, you know my plus size ass likes to shop at Torrid, and this is just like a typical black, almost like wet and wild eyeliner, but I like this for my waterline. It seems to work. Um, some formulas really irritate it. This is not too bad, so I'm just gonna come in and just ever so gently get more probably more by the lash line than anything else. Um, maybe not so much of my waterline. But I want to add a little bit of smoke. Yeah. So I'm going to do that and then come back in with that pencil brush and just make sure everything is nice and blended. Let's go into lashes. First of all, I want to coat my lashes with a little mascara and I'm going to curl them. So this is my rose gold tweezerman lash cur curler. La, la, la. And then I want to just put something on that is just like not super duper thickening or anything like that, but something that's going to give me a little bit of standout underneath these lashes because they are so thick and they are mink. So I'm going to add a little bit of Clinique's high impact mascara just to lift and kind of add a little bit of texture to my natural lashes. You guys know I don't work much with band lashes. I've never been a huge fan of them. Um, I actually find them like pretty annoying, that weight on the lash, but I feel like with this look, it looks so pretty with false lashes. And the last time I did it, I used just like cheap Ardell's, I think. They were like double wispies. And it came out really good, so. Okay. And while that dries, I'm actually gonna go off camera really quick and do my brows, and then we'll come back and get these lashes on. Okay, so that is the best my brows are gonna get. <laughs> Sometimes they work really great for me, other days, not so great. Anyway, moving on, these are these gorgeous lashes and I am super excited to put them on. I'm nervous, you guys. Um, lashes are not my forte and they can tend to feel, like I said, a little heavy on me, but I really wanna give it a whirl because I wanna see this look kind of amped up because you can see it now with just a coat of mascara. And it's like, mm, okay, this is pretty, but I need more. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to, um, first of all, I wanna lay these lashes onto my eye and see how they're gonna feel and what the length is gonna be like. So let me see if I can get this off nice and gentle. Right off the bat though, the texture of these lashes is just so pretty and the band feels so solid compared to other lashes that I've purchased. So these are definitely gonna be long for me. And I think since I really like the wispiness on the outside, I'm gonna try snipping the corner of the inside. All right. So I picked up Duo um, Adhesive, and this is dark tone, so that this way we wouldn't see any bit of clear or white coming through. Um, when I work on other people, I love this. And you know, it's crazy. When I do lashes on other people, I feel like they always come out so great. And then it's like I go and put them on myself, and I'm just like, Nicole, what did you do? What in the, did you do? guys holy lashes oh my goodness you guys these are like intense I probably could have cut them even a little bit more just because I have pretty small eyes compared to these babies these are like designed for some I don't even know otherworldly shaped eye but wow I'm just kind of fluffing a little bit more orange just to kind of intensify this look but these lashes are amazing like they're so thick so big 
definitely over the top honey bunny but um i think they look really cool for this kind of a look i probably would not wear these out like all the time just because i am not used to lashes and um it's funny because i am like super duper natural when it comes to my lashes most of the time and the fact that i chose like such an over the top lash but I wanted something different out of my comfort zone because at the end of the day that is what makeup is about is trying new things and not being afraid to take risks so that's why we went with these lashes um, but anyway I have not done blush yet so I'm gonna grab my BH 10 color palette and I want to kind of hop into a few colors here and in going with this kind of like warmth and moviness I actually want to add a little bit of pink in salmon here and then work it into some neutrals and then just kind of tap it off and work that in so I guess what we really need to do is glow because if we're gonna have this much going on we need to glow so I'm gonna grab my BH Spotlight Highlight and I'm going to add a mixture of um, Ethereal with Vivid. Really pop that into the cheekbone. For lips today, I'm going to take NYX um, Lip Suede Pencil in London and Line. For lipstick, I'm gonna go into, actually let's do Loyalist from Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. Um, I want something kind of like nude and fun, but my lip liner has like a peachy nude and this is more of like a pinky nude. Okay, so really quickly, I feel like I need an inner highlight with this kind of a look. So I'm gonna go into the color Vivid and Ethereal in my BH palette and just pop that on the inside corner of this eye look. And then of course we wanna set with our MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus and this is Coconut. Okay guys, so this is the finished look and it is extreme, <laughs> but I really like it. This is something that's definitely more out of my comfort zone as far as like the lashes, but um, the overall eye look, I that's something that I would wear all the time, but to just step it up a notch and feel like a new person with these lashes. So um, they feel... I feel them there, I'm gonna be truthful. I know that they're thick, I can, I don't know, I feel them, but they're not, I don't know, they work with you. It's hard to explain compared to some lashes that feel just like a straight ba like band on your lash. These are there, you feel them, but they work with you. So kudos to Lily Lashes. Um, I really like this style. It's not something I would wear every day, but obviously if I had an event to go to or I just wanted to feel a little something extra, I will be wearing these. So I really like that. Um, you guys, are Urban Decay, this palette, I can't say enough about it. This is such an awesome palette. I love the colors. They're so blendable. Love the chicness of the palette and just how fun it is. You feel like you're going on the run. You feel like you're just born to like travel, own the world. Gorgeous colors. They complement, I think, all different skin types. They're, you know, some really great smoky colors for evening looks. Great stuff to wear, just a normal everyday look, a contoured look, whatever 
your case may be, whoever you feel like being that day. Um, the Armani Luminous Silk is growing on me, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not my favorite foundation ever. I like really full, full coverage, and I feel like this is more medium. Um, you build it, you can mix it with others, like I have with Tinny Dole, and it comes out really nicely. But overall, if I was to just put this right on my face, I don't feel like it would be enough coverage for me. So um, considering the price point, it's not something that I think I'm going to gravitate towards or replenish right away, but it is a nice product. Same with the Charlotte Tilbury. I don't feel a major like, oh my gosh moment like I have to have this again it's a beautiful product and I'm gonna work with it but I'm gonna be honest I've only had this for like a week now and I'm already seeing the product move to the point where this is gonna be done sooner than later and truthfully I would rather my eight dollar makeup revolution I feel like it's more coverage it's not as thick and um, I'm one of those people that unfortunately I have, you know, circles, lines. I like a long wear, full, full coverage. And the Charlotte Tilbury, you know, I love the idea of it, but it just didn't perform how I wanted it to. But I do still love her airbrush powder and a few other little things here and there. Um, again, thinking of price, thinking of being economical, I can pass on that. But anyway, um, I do hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial and a few new products that I debuted. They're not new, new as far as, you know, latest and greatest, but they are new for me and they are new to my channel. So yes, um, again, this video is not sponsored and I think it's something that has to be said. Um, granted, I have no, nothing against people that are sponsored. Um, I do think that we've kind of, geared away and become more about marketing and money in this industry and I think we need to be more about openness and honesty and just more importantly having fun with it whether you're an influencer and an ambassador or you're an actual artist or if you're a little bit of both like I, I consider myself a little of both um, but you know we need to have more fun and we need to be kinder to each other. <laughs> um, and we need to be real about stuff too. You know, if you're in a contract with people and you're pushing a lot of product by them, that's fine. You're a business person, you're making your money, you're doing your thing. Um, but I think we need to be honest too about things. And I know companies do have clauses and agreements, but um, as honest as we can be, is as honest as we can be right so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and this look as always give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i will link product information down below my social media reach out comments come in welcome yourself this is a fun place to be and um until next time i'll see you guys again really soon Sometimes I don't think I deserve you So I say some fucked up shit just